it's interesting how the meaning of red pill has evolved over the last uh, five years to, to essentially now mean anti, I would say anti-woman. They would say pro-man, but I think it's far beyond pro-man. I think it's decidedly anti-woman in many ways. And you see people who, I think some of them are, are bad actors who are peddling it. But then you also see people like, like Pearly Things who, I don't know Pearl. I don't know if she's a bad actor or not. I kind of get the sense that maybe she's just a naive uh, person being kind of dragged along out of half desire to be famous and half probably hasn't read a book. Um, and, and half of that I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> but and the other half you can also relate to. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's this interesting question that, that uh, is harder to talk about in one-on-one settings. It might be a fit this format. Just to talk about what is the role of men and women, what is the role of marriage in a society that has essentially turned its back on the concept of marriage that is legally encoded anti, uh, anti-man and policies abol- and then into our legal code. the definition of marriage. I mean, abolish the definition. You know, it's, not, so it's, not, it's not anti-man. They've, they've abolished difference. They've abolished right. the difference between men. The distinction itself. Yeah. You know, I, I just went on the Whatever podcast yeah. for my... I, I think it's now my like twenty eighth hour on that, that show. You were that was six hours after a three hour debate on the show. So I, I that did was a separate thing. Yeah, I did nine so hours. Did nine basically hours. Great. Yeah, Whoa. and I did, and, but what? it was it was worth it. How? It was Why? great. It was great. I really love that show. <laughs> I love it because you got almost every question. <laughs> I when when, when I. When I did it the first time. You couldn't pay me, you pay me a million dollars, I wouldn't. No, I love it. Because the girl, these poor girls, man, the whole thing with that show, which is why it's so funny, is the, you get Hold the on, girls. I'll pay you $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going to do it. Aren't you? You're like 11. <laughs> no, the thing with that show that makes it very funny is guys go on and they make fun of these girls who have only fans who are like 18 and don't know anything. And then the guys completely destroy them. And then the girls look like dummies. And then the clip goes viral. And I, I felt... It would be wrong to do that. I felt I might get a lot of views, but I might also burn in hell for eternity. And I thought about it for a moment. And then I thought, no, okay, I, I won't do it. And so I went on. And you also I, have a rule. Never give the audience what they want. Yeah, exactly. Never. <laughs> like, I, was, I went on a great Michael discourse Nostor. about the, the Treaty of Augsburg, actually. <laughs> I, you know, so I, I go on there, and I, I just felt it's not these girls' fault. All of them have some weird family situation. None of the, We live in a culture that teaches them a ton of lies. They, don't, they, don't, they, they have no education. Even if they went to good schools, they have no education. They don't. So I, I felt, okay, let's just talk about what's really going on here. And they're victims of feminism, and the red pill guys are victims of feminism. And the <coughs> irony about the red pill guys, I sympathize with them a lot, a lot of ways. The family courts are totally stacked against dudes. The culture promotes divorce and abolish the definition of marriage and blah, blah, blah. But the, the red pill guys are feminists. Their, their sense of men and women is basically That's this. Right. It's just that men and women are interchangeable. Yes. And go around, screw around, you owe nothing to women. If it's good for women, it's good for men. And that's just a lie. You know, the, the fundamental unit of society is actually not the individual. Right. I love individual rights. It's good to be an individual. The, un, the fundamental unit of society is the family. It's men and women together who have a love that becomes so real that sure. you make more people. Well, to have, to have an atom, you have to have a proton and an electron, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like a man is a proton. Like, v- very important, but essentially nothing until it's unified. To have an atom, you need to have an Eve. No, I, so. I, that's where I thought he was going. That's where I thought he was going. And then I, was gonna, I thought he was mm-hmm. going to go for the Steve thing. And yeah. I, I was just gonna, <laughs> that's why I, Not <laughs> Steve. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've always uh, two the, protons and Adam does not make. <laughs> I dare say. I've always with the red pill, you know, and, and I've and I've been in many uh, uh, altercations with with the red. I've run afoul of the red pill crowd many times talking about these issues. And the question I've always had for them that they've never answered, and I'd love to hear an answer from any of them, is that you know because I agree with ninety five percent of their criticisms, uh, uh, as you point out, the family courts and it's how it's stacked against men and so on and so forth. What's the other option, like? Okay, we agree with all that. So then, men should just be alone and and give up on their on their bloodline and die, and their bloodline is extinguished. Like what you are suggesting is despair. You you are telling men that men are already feeling despair. They're feeling meaninglessness. They're feeling mm-hmm. lost. They're feeling alone. Uh, they're feeling like everything's stacked against them. And so your answer to them is, yeah, well, just that that's the be, be in despair and then die. 
And my, my point is that, that that's, just, that's just not an okay answer. That can't be the answer. And, and have lots and lots of sex. Well, but that's, that's, that's the sterile that's, that's what you said. Sterile. Although not as much as a married man. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, this is, but this is what you were saying, is that that's how it turns to the anti-woman. Yeah. Because it's not about the despair. The way that you find meaning is then by disparaging the people who have victimized you. Right? In, in any victim-victimizer sort of narrative, when, when there is no actual victim and victimizer, and it has to be sort of put together artificially, then the, vic- the person who self-perceives as the victim is very likely to then strike out at the person who they perceive as the victimizer. And so for a lot of the red pill men who perceive the woman, the great woman, as the victimizer, the idea is that you lash out at women by having lots of sex with random girls and basically treating them like trash. And it's okay because they said that it's okay with them, but that doesn't, I've never understood the argument that it relieves you of responsibility for treating a woman well just because the woman has consented to be treated badly. But, but this, he's right about the despair. This is go- permeating the right. It permeates the politics of the right. It's the idea is basically it's all over. They think of people basically, Ben, like you and me, as sitting on an ice floe kind of floating out with, as the ice you know, melts away because we're sitting around thinking about civil debate and you know, c- constitutional governance. And they think that's all over now. And, and they're all, they're, despair is, permeates the right. And I listen, I listen to a lot of these young guys, and they're talking about bringing back monarchy. They're talking about, you know, they're, yeah, they're king. I know. you love, What? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Yeah, you know, but you word. had monarchy. It's not that great. You know, it actually isn't. <laughs> you know, if you, think, if you think our elections are bad, well, you see the beheadings, you know, <laughs> because that's how most of the kings of England were killed. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know. You, that's fine. We'll I'm, not saying, that I'm, I'm not saying we need an imam or a sheikh, you know. Honestly, this whole conversation would be putting me to sleep, but I can't go to sleep right here. I need my Helix Sleep mattress. Whoa. So good. Whoa. Right? So good. I've been talking about my Helix mattress for years. I've had it for probably a decade at this point. It is awesome because it was made just for me. Michael, you also have a Helix Sleep mattress. I have. I have. Though, I tell you, I'm not even going to give my own personal testimony because someone I care about even more than I care about myself is my sweet little child. And my sweet little baby, my eldest son, is transferring from his crib to his bed right now. And do you want to know how spoiled my son is? My son is sleeping for his first bed ever in a Helix Get Elite out. mattress. How outrageous is that? Wow. He is a fancy person. Mm-hmm. You should also be a fancy person. If you haven't already checked out the Helix Elite collection, you need to. Helix harnesses years of extensive mattress expertise to offer a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. If you're nervous about buying a mattress online, you really don't have to be because they've got a sleep quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? I took that Helix sleep quiz. I was matched with a firm but breathable mattress because otherwise I get the back pain, I heat up at night. Helix knows that, so they gave me the right mattress. Plus, Helix has a 10-year warranty. You can try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. They have great financing options, flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. Right now, Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and a free bedroom bundle for our listeners in honor of President's Day. The bundle includes... Two free pillows, a set of sheets, a mattress protector. It's a good deal. Go to helixsleep.com slash Ben. Use code HELIXPARTNER25. It's the best offer yet. It's not going to last long. That's helixsleep.com slash Ben. Use code HELIXPARTNER25. Am I missing this? What is the red pill no marriage thing? I feel like I'm pretty in the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a big deal. Am I missing? Like, yeah. I feel like I've totally missed this. Yeah, that's, they, that's, that's the whole, their whole position. They, they think that, that well, what marriage men is are, a... what, men are, what men are anti-marriage? Well, yeah, that's the point. They, they shouldn't be. You know, but it's... No, but they, he's right. This is true. All the so guys that pop up on our Twitter feed. But tell me, I'm, I'm actually missing debates. this. Well, this I, I, I didn't know the marriage thing. I'm very so, pro-marriage. So Pearl, Pearl made that argument. Yes. Okay. The so argument, men, literally, men should, should not, not get, get married. married. Okay. Because the institution... But are men listening to that? Like, are men saying that men shouldn't get married? Or is that a woman saying that a man shouldn't get married? Well, Pearl... It, I think that there are examples of men saying it as well. But I think Pearl is sort of a, a prominent... One of the prominent voices. A lot of the people But she's not married. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, so then that, that I think that's, first, that's that's a huge thing, right? I mean, obviously, it's like listening to people that don't have kids tell you why you shouldn't have kids. Like, it <laughs> doesn't really work, right? Because when you're telling them about what changes inside of you when you get married, and I think it's very easy to gravitate towards that. That is a feminist message, not to get married. And if her argument is, if your quarrel is with the courts, I could agree with you. Like, you know, the courts have done tons of things that are awful. So, that I, disagree. Well, I, I don't even agree necessarily with the courts taking marriage at all. And it was a church thing and they took it and this is how we ended up with, with gay marriage rights, which I'm very much opposed to. Well, I would say um, that a big part of the red pill thing that we would all probably agree with is they diagnose actual problems. So right. when Pearl or, or other people in the movement come along and say, this is a major problem in society, right. I almost always agree with them. Yeah. It's when they get to the prescription that I think that, the, that it falls right. apart. The prescription being 
you know, lashing out at women generally or, or well, embracing the, despair or not, yeah, uh, kind no, of nihilism. That's a feminist message. I mean, you, that, that it is a, a fundamentally to be anti-family, I don't understand how you could identify as a conservative at all yeah. because everything that the left is trying to do, every Marxist principle, every feminist principle is about disrupting you know, the family unit. It, it's what connects everything from the climate change lobby to don't, you know, don't have kids, the planet's going to die, to yep. feminism, you know, be like men, we should be like men. It's all a disruption of the family unit. And if you, if you are now arguing in favor of something that's fundamentally Marxist, then you have to examine whether or not you're conservative at all. That would, would be what my trying pushback to, on that. What we're trying to I, I haven't heard any men say that they're anti so Maybe I need to just... No, I, I have. A lot of, I don't want to yeah, give them yeah. press because they're all jerks to me online. Okay. But, they, but there are a handful of these guys. And the, the irony of it is they, they put, put themselves out there to be these big, virile, you know, pinnacles of masculinity. But their anthropology is fundamentally, for lack of a better word, gay. Right? Their, their anthropology is fundamentally sterile. And it's, it's saying... Yeah, we shouldn't get married. We shouldn't have kids. We should just have sterile uh, relations with <laughs> random women. And so it's kind of how the irony that, you know, we end up at, at the, the topic that no, no one's allowed to name anymore that Matt made a movie about. And, uh, you know, people say, well, that's so crazy. You know, we should dial that back. But that's just a consequence of the very same sexual revolution that has said for many decades now that men and women are, are exactly the same, which comes from feminism, right? So Horseshoe I, theory. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's... it's uh, this, the logical conclusion of Gloria Steinem is these red pill bros, and they don't even, they don't even realize it. Well, I'm, what, I'm what I, radically pro marriage. What I what I run into a lot. Of, I mean, whether these people identify as red pill or not doesn't doesn't really matter. But when I talk about marriage on my show, and I promote it, and I talk about my own experiences with marriage, uh, I hear all the time. I mean, the comments are full of people who are conservative who are saying, "Well, well, that's just your experience. That's a that's a you know you you know you, you got lucky. You have it easy." Yes. And, uh, and so, and, and you're trying to trick men into this deal that isn't going to work for them uh, just because you happen to find a good woman. And, and, that, and that's the kind of defeatist mentality I, I hear all the time, yes. all the time. And, and what I want to say to these men is like, it's, no, it, it's, it's an easy way to dismiss it, but we're all married in this room. We're all happily married. So we didn't get lucky. It's like, you, you, just, you have to work at it every single day. It's a, it's, a, it's a choice that you make. And there's a lot of women out there who are looking to make that choice also. Um, so it's very easy to just kind of dismiss. It's also, to get back it's to, also to get back though, to this point, actually. So I'm going to back your point before you, before you back your own. So the, 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 the real question is why that's arising on the right. You understand why that revolutionary movement exists on the left. I mean, Candace spelled it out. It is, it is fundamentally a Marxist movement that, that seeks to destroy the institution of marriage in order to level all of society so that you can build up, based on the ashes, some sort of weird scrap heap of new creation. But the question is why that's happened on the right. And this is where I agree with Drew, is that because the right, and this, this goes back even to some of the Taylor Swift points that you were making earlier about why the right is getting Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey wrong, just imagistically. Yep. I mean, I now agree with everything you said about Taylor Swift. <laughs> but the, but, the, but the, the reason that that's happening is because since every institution has now been fundamentally taken over by the left, or at least the, that's the belief of the right, if you extend that to every institution, that, that extends even to like the most important institutions, right? The right is looking and they're seeing every institution that we once relied upon rested out of our control, including things like church, right? Th things that, that were very fundamental to our lives, rested out of our control and then militarized against us. And so that's sort of the argument that the red pillars are making. What they're, what they're saying is that the institution of marriage was rested out of our control and then perverted and used against us in the same way that they're arguing that about the government or arguing that about the church or arguing that about the universities or the press. And the problem is that when it comes to marriage, because it's so personal and because in the end, there is no substitute for it, you can't just despair of the institutions and say build a giant alternative in the way, and like you have to actually do the thing that conservatives really should be doing in nearly all of these, in all of these modes, which is seize control of the institutions back. So what the big debate that's happening right now on the right is, can we do that with these institutions or do you burn them to the ground? And it differs institution by institution, right? I think most of us in this room would say like the university system, go ahead and burn it to the ground or the, or the legacy media, go ahead and burn it to the ground. But when it comes to the institution of marriage, you can't burn it down. That's not something you can burn down. Well, it's not an institution invented by man, for one thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and so you, you actually have to- Well, you can to, burn it, but you burn civilization with it. Exactly. And so, the, and so I think that what's happened is a broad category error that the right has made. In being anti-institutionalist broadly, you're starting to see the most right-wing edges of the right wing say, well, that includes all institutions. Mm -hmm.